This is the long bed. It goes along the whole length of the garden. I did plant. Um, I planted uh, sugar snap peas along the fence, and I have garlic, which will not last the whole season. And the garlic so far looks pretty good. The snap peas are coming up. I have a couple of tomatoes here, uh, looking kind of sad, but it's been chilly. Um, they will start growing as soon as the as soon as the warm days hit. I have more peas. These peas I planted a couple of weeks earlier and they had no signs of <laughs> sprouting, but now they're finally starting to come up. And then I have my sad little atomic, Brad's atomic tomato, which probably it just completely stunned and not doing much. But, uh, I'll give it a little more time. We've had a lot of rain and some cool days. So uh, after I planted, I probably should have covered this one, but I wasn't thinking about it. My sweet peas are coming up and grabbing onto the trellis, just like I planned. That is definitely a good sign. I have garlic and kale and spinach in this bed. I have more peas coming up in this bed, which I have onions that over wintered. They usually flower and I get seeds from them. I've been leaving them there. They're probably three or four years old. And then this side I have carrots and radish. And then I think it's one lonely onion from last year, a red onion. In this row, I have my zinnia that I planted. They don't look that happy. But they're definitely better than when they were in the, in the tray. So hopefully I'll get a few flowers out of these guys. This is where I have my asparagus growing and I'm going to harvest them today for the first time. Look at how fat that one is at the end. Um, very excited. I love fresh asparagus. This bed I have a small amount of carrots and it looks like some cilantro has uh, seeded itself from last year, but I planted just carrots and radish in this bed. The radish would be picked before I want to use it for my sweet potatoes. So here I am about to transplant some of my tomatoes and I repotted these and labeled them with a permanent magic marker, but it was supposed to be a permanent magic marker, but all of the lettering faded. This is how it started. This was a, a Katie did dwarf and I guess it was down here and that's why the sun didn't fade it. So most of all of them have faded. This is a sweetie, that one's not so bad. This one, I have no idea what that says. This one, you can't even see any writing on it at all. This one, I was able to say it's a black cherry. So I'm gonna have to go back and check my seed packets and see if I can decipher some sort of writing that might be left on the tags. I didn't do it on the, I only did it on this back part of the tag. And I thought I was doing so good. Anyways, before I take them out of the pot, I'm gonna go through my seedlings and see what I can do. This was the, and I say was, cause I'm gonna pull it, the kale that overwintered in my garden underneath the cold frame last year. It kind of split open, so I'm not sure if it split open because there was eggs that were hatched in it or if it split open because of the rains, but it's definitely not a healthy plant and I don't want to keep it around. 
So we're going to get rid of this one. Uh, it's kind of sad, but uh, we did have a lot of rain, so maybe it split open because of the rain. But you never know what overwintered in it. I was hoping that I would keep it, but uh, it doesn't look healthy. If you notice the discoloration on the stem of the tomato plants and the leaves and how curvy it is, this is not a healthy tomato plant. Uh, it has some sort of virus. I uh, pulled some aphids off of it. I had it next to the pak choy that was in on the shelving unit in the house when I found the aphids on the pak choy. And I didn't notice the aphids on the tomato plants originally, but these were the first plants that I repotted. They were the healthiest ones in the flat, and they're the ones that actually were labeled and the labels didn't fade. So it is a shame. Um, I wouldn't even chance putting these in my garden. I wouldn't even chance composting the plants or the soil. They will go into the garbage. I don't want to contaminate my compost uh, and I don't compost anything that looks diseased and these definitely have a problem. And it is about 15 plants, which is a terrible shame. But I do have some others that were uh, the ones that were actually in the flat, the ones that didn't grow as quickly, the, the ones that weren't as strong, they're the ones that I still have. The ones that weren't labeled uh, properly, those are the ones that I have. If you remember the pepper plants that I overwintered last fall, this is the third one to die out of the fourth. It's pretty much all brown. There's really nothing left that's alive on it. The one next to it, this one might have a shot. I can't tell, it's too early to tell if there's any new growth. That might be some new growth starting right there. I don't know, it's hard to tell. So I'm not pulling it yet. I'm gonna wait to see what happens. Maybe I'll give it some magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. See, there's another little leaf that might be coming up down here. It's just, I don't know, I can't tell. I thought I was going to be able to overwinter some peppers this year. But that's not going to stop me from trying again next year.